Hello and welcome yourself back to Side Men React with myself, Ethan, and Simon. We're going down a weird route today. We're, we're learning about the top mm. 10 most disturbing human experiments performed in the US. Uh, viewer discretion Ooh. is advised. Um, we have no idea what we're getting ourselves into, but let's run it. It's on Watch it Mojo, smart, so it can't be, it can't be, uh, you know, smart. can't be too bad. Uh, it's on Watch Mojo. I mean, let's see. Let's get it. It's going to be bad, isn't it? That's wrong. 240 volts. Oh. These horrible what? acts were committed that, in the name of science. I was going to say. Welcome to WatchMojo.com. And today oh. we're counting down our picks for the top 10 terrible experiments performed in the United States. Ow, I've been electrocuted. Ow. The Moscow show yeah, trials, Captain America's in these this. court cases give the world its first uh, public experiments of mind control. For this list, we're looking at examples of human experimentation executed in the U.S. that were harmful to their test subjects. It was important. They were supposedly untreated. And. Uh, it would be undesirable to go ahead and use large amounts of penicillin to treat another disease oh. because you'd interfere with uh, the study. Please note that some of these stories could not be proven as 100% I did not have sexual relations accurate. with that and woman. And as such, may <laughs> only be commonly repeated rumors. <laughs> However, we've done our best to get the most accurate information possible. Ooh. An overwhelming number who say they were intentionally exposed to mustard gas in secret experiments what? have been denied benefits for decades. Number 10, oh, Project MK Ultra. Officially sanctioned in 1953 and backed by the CIA, this series of experiments studied the effect of mind control with methods like hypnosis, drugs, isolation, and sensory deprivation yeah, this is tough. used this is to very tough. human yeah. behavior. This is what they did. They did chemicals, they did biologicals, they did disguises, they did electronics, Ugh. secret writing, and the like. The CIA enlisted the help of prisons, hospitals, and more than 40 universities to perform experiments on subjects without their knowledge. It does make you wonder what's still going on. Operation Midnight Climax, prostitutes who were secretly working for the CIA gave clients LSD. And what? while these men were under the I influence, just... they were spied on through a one-way mirror. In 1973, what? CIA Director Richard Helms ordered the destruction of all records related to MKUltra. But subsequent mm. investigations led by Senator Frank Church and Vice President Nelson Rockefeller, in addition to 20,000 records recovered in 1977, were able to shed light on these activities. That's so bad. Number 9. The Stanford Prison Experiment Designed by psychologist Philip Zimbardo, the goal of this 1971 experiment was to examine the psychological impact of imprisonment. For the experiment, the psychology building at Stanford University was turned into a prison. I think I heard about 24 this one. undergraduate students divided into two groups, prisoners I've never heard of this one. and guards. I don't look on it as an experiment so the, or a simulation. It was all, they're all it's students, just, but the ones who turned into guards ended up acting like guards and taking like getting a power trip almost. I think if it's this one. Really? Yeah, so it's like, obviously, oh, that's like going like, all right, some of the sidemen are gods, some of you are prisoners. And then yeah. the sidemen <laughs> Did you see gods. KSI in the prison? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's this one anyway. A prison by psychologists instead of run by the state. They took their commitment to their roles to disturbing levels, with the guards doling out abuse and the prisoners oh, accepting no. it. Yeah. Things got so intense that some students had to be removed due to the trauma. Although the exercise was supposed to last two weeks and had the interest of the U.S. Marine Corps and Navy, it was shut That's down mental. after just six days when the repercussions of the experiment became clear. Number eight, the Milgram experiment. Fascinated by what motivated Nazi officers to commit atrocities during World War II, Yale psychologist Stanley Milgram set up an experiment to see just how far Americans would go before their conscience stopped them. <laughs> the answer is what? Why do we need to know? Right. It's hard to understand exactly why. Part of it is the absurdity of the situation, and part of it is the nervousness that they're feeling. In the 1960s experiment, right. a teacher would read questions to a learner, who was actually an actor pretending to participate in the study. When the learner got an answer wrong, the teacher gave what he believed to be a real electric shock, progressing uh. in 15 volt increments up to 450 volts. Did it sound as if he was in pain? Yeah. If the teachers objected, they were forced to administer it regardless. After being oh, assured shit. that they would be free of all responsibility, the teacher typically complied, even when the learner screamed in agony. That's wrong. 225 volts. Ow! <laughs> Cut it off! Cut it off of 
two thirds of the I'm not right. subjects uh, went all I mean, the way uh, to 450 uh, volts, proving how much right, we're that, 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 that to scream one authority, exactly, you even know. if we believe it to be morally or legally unjustified. It'll be all right. Yeah. Please continue. Number seven, Dr. Leo Stanley's San Quentin prison That's experiments. As right, people chief are surgeon fucked. at San Quentin, yeah, people Dr. Are fucked, Leo bro. Stanley like, used fucked. prisoners for various experiments from 1913 to 1951, with some verging into dark territory. These experiments included sterilization and possibly finding treatments for Spanish flu. A strong supporter of eugenics, Stanley performed vasectomies on inmates who were sold on the idea of better health, reformed behavior, and a stronger sex drive. In one project that aimed to find a source of rejuvenation, Stanley used live prisoners for surgery that transplanted testicles, human what? or otherwise. The experiment began what? with testicles what? sourced from executed prisoners, but when the supply what? ran dry, but... Dr. Stanley began using boar and goat oh testicles my God. for his work. What is... Number six, the Boston Project. Why? Oh, it's getting worse. Humans are tapped. Worse. We're yeah. only at number Humans six. So We're at number uh, six. So this is gonna, this is gonna, this is gonna get messed up. Really humans, are, humans, are tapped. Hum, hum, humans are tapped. Humans are tapped. We're so done. We're disgusted. Working with the Oak Ridge National Laboratory from 1953 to 57, Dr. William Sweet, who was the chief neurosurgeon at Harvard's Massachusetts General Hospital, gave uranium injections to 11 what? cancer patients who were terminally ill, with all but one reportedly suffering from brain tumors. Dr. Sweet was interested in learning how the distribution of uranium affected the body and whether it could be used to treat tumors. In 1995, under testimony... Them. Uranium, like, it's radioactive, it causes cancer. Yeah, right? exactly, that's what I was about it. to say. Maybe uh, unless he was praying it would have yeah. reverse effects, maybe. I don't know. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what the thought process was. Unless his, like... his thought was like, you know how when you go out drinking the next morning, you should drink. Yeah, what yeah. Having if you've got from radioactivity. If you've, yeah, yeah, if you've yeah. got cancer, put mm -hmm. more cancer in. Yeah, you know, they can fight. Yeah, you know. I mean, I'm not saying it works, obviously. <laughs> obviously not. It's on disturbing yeah. human experiments. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah. He had consent from all his patients for his experiments. However, a lack of supporting documents, as well as the case of one patient who was found unconscious and later died without regaining consciousness or being identified, makes those claims slightly dubious. Number five, the Tuskegee syphilis experiment. From 1932 to 1972, 600 African-American farmers from Alabama were selected for a U.S. Public Health Services program, receiving free healthcare and other benefits for their cooperation. However, they weren't told they were actually being studied. 399 right. of the men had syphilis, while the other 201 <coughs> were used as a control group. Many of these subjects, poor and often illiterate sharecroppers, didn't even know they had the disease. Even after penicillin was developed as a cure for syphilis in 1947, the treatment was withheld from the patients, as was access to proper information or treatment. Many ultimately died of syphilis, with at least 40 women contracting it from their husbands and nearly fair. 20 children born with it. I As a result that's... of an information leak, the project was shut down in 1972. You know, there's like the theory that like, you know, like HIV and all that, like apparently like, there's conspiracies that it was planted, wasn't it? Like it was planted in these countries to spread and stuff like that. It's all tapped. It's all very tapped. Conspiracies. So many conspiracies, but yeah, very tapped. Not a fan. Mm. It wasn't until 1997 that President Bill Clinton formally apologized on behalf of the government for what happened. The eight men who are survivors of the syphilis study at Tuskegee are a living link to a time not so very long ago that many Americans would prefer not to remember. Number four, the right. University of California experiments on newborns. Leading up to a study published in the Medical Journal of Pediatrics, 113 newborn babies, no older than three days old, were experimented on by scientists at the University of California's what? Department of Pediatrics in the early 1960s. Studies conducted on the babies included a battery of bizarre and seemingly unnecessary experiments regarding blood flow and pressure. In one test, over 40 babies were placed on circumcision boards and held nah. upside down, while doctors measured how their nah, blood man. flowed to their head. In another, nah, babies were placed ankle deep in ice cold water, while a catheter was inserted into their aorta in an effort to monitor what? their aortic pressure. What's happening? Number three, yeah. Dr. Yeah. Bender. This is nuts. This is nuts. This is so nuts. <laughs> 
Bro. <sighs> her forces electroconvulsive therapy on children. While working as a neuropsychiatrist at New York's Bellevue Hospital, Dr. Loretta Bender decided an effective treatment for children with developmental disorders or schizophrenia was electroconvulsive therapy, or ECT, previously called electroshock therapy. Uh. In 1947, Dr. Bender sent small electric currents through the brains of 98 children, all of whom were 12 or under, and one of whom was three. Another of Dr. Bender's methods You're for trying to alleviate schizophrenia was to give her young patients LSD. Ted Chabasinski was one of the children who went through the therapy when he was six years old, and he later became a human rights activist who successfully fought against the use of electroshock nice. therapy in Berkeley, California. Hey. The best thing we can do is go on with our daily routine. All right? Oh, oh. Jeez. Number two, right. military experiments with mustard gas during World War II. In 1943, the Navy recruited upwards of 60,000 young men for a study. Only 60, they weren't 000. asked to participate. They mental, were told. Only when they arrived at the Naval Research Laboratory in Washington, D.C., did they find the real purpose of the study, to measure the effects of mustard gas and other chemicals on humans. The crazy part is, like, in the military, like, they're so trained to just, like, <sighs> listen to their orders and do what they're told to do. Yeah. yeah. Like, they probably don't even question something like that, and it's so messed up. Like, they'll be like, yeah. The thing is, like, like you, you obey orders, don't you? That's it. Yeah. It's just bang, yeah. I'm right, following leader's orders, bang, go. Mental. They rubbed chemical on my arm and hand and had me breathe the gas without a mask on. I had no protective clothing in the gas chamber. Locked in chambers and exposed to the deadly gas, the men involved in these experiments suffered horrible health effects, including internal and external burns. Additionally, as Jeez. it was a wartime experiment, they were bound by oaths of secrecy and faced dishonorable discharge or yeah. imprisonment if what? they spoke of the order the details of which were not what? formally declassified until 1993. Before oh, we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Okay, this is a bit weird. Honorable. Let's have some honorable, what do you mean honorable mentions. mentions? Uh, uh, yeah. Dishonorable mentions. Uh. What do you mean honorable mentions? <laughs> what is... Ooh. See, this is what I'm saying, bro. Why do they do this shit? Number one, Vanderbilt University's vitamin drinks. Following World War II, researchers at Vanderbilt University gave over 800 pregnant women a mysterious concoction they were told was a special vitamin drink. It was actually mixtures that contained doses of radioactive iron, as what? the scientists were testing its absorption rate during pregnancy. The I... radiation these women nah, were exposed man. to was reportedly 30 times what? higher than normal. Around three or four children died of cancer or leukemia as a result what? of the experiment. No. And some mothers developed rashes, lost hair and teeth, and contracted various types of cancer themselves. In 1994, right. almost 40 years later, Vanderbilt University faced a lawsuit for the four-year study and was forced to pay out more than $10 million in damages. Do you agree with our list? Not bad. Not too bad. <laughs> I mean, we, uh, I mean, we ran them pretty ragged. Which American Didn't experiment like horrified list. you the most? Yeah. I get a little skittish. Uh, <laughs> nervous. For more historical top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe Jeez. to right, this is why I got trust uh, issues. Well. This is why I got trust issues. Well, yeah. yeah listen, if anyone try, anyone tries blocking me in a room at an airport or whatever, just know I'm breaking out however I can. I'm causing a scene. <laughs> at an airport. Like, you're, you're not, yeah, not me. You're not, put, you're not putting any uranium in my anus or anything, bro. I'm good. I'm out. That's in an airport. Peace. <laughs> it's just like we need to take I don't know why. Because that's what I feel like they might catch you in a country. You've flown to Mexico, for example. All of a sudden, this bloke comes up to you and says, come with me. Now you're in the back of a black van and he's fuck, he's rubbing uranium all over you. Great. You know nice. what? I guess this all of this stuff is one upside to the world being so connected and everything being filmed and on True. social media and people being connected. Because back then stuff like this could happen. People could just disappear and like no one would look into it. No one would know. Like now yeah. there's so much information. Luckily, well, that, hopefully, that, that video's made me. I was gonna like say you hope, you hope. Yeah. The video's yeah. made me uncomfortable. You know. I'm very uncomfortable. Same. I don't like it. All right. Well, well, goodbye, everyone. There are some messed up humans out there. Stay safe. We'll see you all next time. Peace. Bye. Peace out.